You know, sometimes I wonder, where would I be in life without Football Manager? What if I was not making videos on the game or, you know, playing the game? I think the answer would be happy. I, I would definitely be a lot happier because managing this team is making me age about 10 times faster. And if anyone is contemplating whether to do a Huddersfield save because they've been watching this series, please don't for your own sanity. Please, just don't do it. Just, just hold off. Just do a fun save like Man United or Barcelona, not Huddersfield Town in the Premier League with 5 million to spend. Like, I literally signed Peter Crouch as a striker. I've gone insane. I generally have gone insane. In the last episode, Steve Mounier proved to me why he is the best striker in the world by scoring both of the goals in both of the Livecom games that we picked. In a 1-1 draw at home to Wolves, and then in a 4-1 away defeat at Manchester United. At this point, I thought, well, the Omens are still looking good. We're not too far off safety, and we have some easy games coming up. That didn't work out the way I planned. So we only played two games in between the last episode and the current episode. And well, I mean, it's not gone well. Uh, we lost 5-1 to Brighton, which is our biggest defeat of the season. And uh, well, I thought we weren't playing that badly. But looking at the goals you conceded, it's an absolute joke. Radjkovic pushed the ball against Tommy Smith uh, to put us 2-0 down. Alexander Sinchenko had pulled a goal back with 15 minutes left and I went all out attacking until Brighton then went and scored three goals in those last 15 minutes. Uh, Pascal Gross uh, scoring a goal which Radjkovic should have probably done better with. And then Radjkovic decided to dive before the board got across the box and Andoni made it 5-1. We then lost to Newcastle at home in the game after that which leads us into the games against Southampton and Burnley in this episode. Now Burnley are currently bottom of the league while Southampton are 16th. So it's a big two games coming up and uh, obviously the Southampton game falls on my birthday. So if we lose against the team that I consider my greatest rivals in real life and then lose to Burnley, well, it's a disaster, really. And this is probably the worst birthday I've ever had. After Juninho Bakuna was sent off against Wolves, I appealed the ban, hopefully to try and get him back into the team for the next few games. And, uh, well, the FA rejected it. I mean, I feel like there's more chance of me winning the lottery and then being eaten by a shark before I get struck by lightning than getting a ban overturned in this game. I would love to know anyone out there who has managed to get one overturned. It's literally impossible. The Winkler also spoke before the Brighton game where we lost 5-1 and said that there was a dressing room split. Split. I mean, that explains so much. I also found out that Philip Billing nearly making five international appearances since I took over means that he is about to get his wages increased to 54 grand a week. I mean, we're about to be relegated to the championship with barely any money in the bank and this bloke's getting an extra 10 grand. You really don't love to see it. David Wagner, who took Huddersfield up to the Premier League and then found it too difficult to manage the team in the Premier League, decided to support me in my quest to keep my job. I mean, I literally did not know I was under pressure until now. So that's made it even worse. Marcelo Bielsa is also the Newcastle manager. And in his press conference before our 1-0 defeat to them, he believed that I should be sacked. I really don't want to be going on about the small team down the road. But I mean, he had to leave them to join Newcastle. So, I mean, who's the real winner? I mean, he is still because he beat me 1-0. That, that's not the point I'm making. Christopher Schindler has also had his a contract renewed for an extra year. Thank you to my director of football for sorting that out. My under-18s also lost their Division 3 Cup final against Luton by three goals to two, which means that the trophy room won't have to be extended just yet. Steve Munio may also be a doubt for the Southampton game as he's got himself injured with a tight groin. I mean, he really should be in bed at that time. Although saying that, that's probably why he's got the injury. Matthias Jorgensen has also got himself injured just before the Southampton game. I mean, it's like they just don't want me to win, isn't it? BBC Radio Leeds also think that the Huddersfield boards are losing patience for me and that a bad result in this game will also get me to sack. Oh, I can't wait to prove them all wrong when I get another 1-1 draw and then keep my job for another week. Now, we move into our game against Southampton and with that is a change in system. Uh, but I will talk about more of that later. Radjkovic starts off in goal. A player that I probably should have dropped because he's been pretty awful lately. But I mean, I spent £7 million on the bloke, so I'm going to have to play him. The back four sees one change and Kongola comes in for Jorgensen, who is only fit enough to make the bench. Uh, Alexander Sinchenko returns to the series to play on the right wing, with Billing, Moy and Brunt making up the rest of the midfield. And the changes system sees Alex Pritchard coming in as a number 10 to play behind Steve Mounier, who leads the line by himself. And if we don't win this game, then we're in deep shit. Looking at that Southampton team, they don't look that scary. They've got Ignacio Abate at right back. They've got Danny Ings leading the line. 
line, Stuart Armstrong playing as a number 10, and they've got Matthew Target playing at left back. I mean, this is probably the easiest game we're going to have this season. I've also realised after 32 games this season, I've been allowing the Winkler uh, to do all the opposition instructions. I've just found out that he hasn't apparently got the tactical knowledge in order to apply them, so I've been going into every game this season without any opposition instructions whatsoever. So now I have to sort it out, and if I win because of that, I really am a moron. <laughs> And after applying those opposition instructions, Southampton got the first highlight of the game. And Jesus Corona found uh, Armstrong, who then played the ball to Redmond, who played it to Corona, and his long-range shot deflected in off Chris Lover, and Southampton took the lead after 2 minutes 46 seconds. I mean, I don't even know what to say anymore. It, it feels like everything that can go against me is going against me. There were no highlights until the 26th minute as Alex Pritchard found Chris Brunt on the wing and without even thinking, he volleyed across into the box for Steve Mounier at the back post to head in for his 10th goal of the season. I mean, you really love to see it. You love to see it. A Chris Brunt assist and a Steve Mounier header. Tell me anything that's better than that. But only 10 minutes later, Southampton got a free kick on the wing and they pass it to Nathan Redmond who shot from the edge of the box and it went in. I mean, is my goalkeeper ever going to save a shot anymore? Or are we just going to concede every long-range shot that goes against me? Half-time came around and we were currently 2-1 down and the team talk had to be perfect and it was perfect. You know, all my players reacted very positively, but I really had to win this game and that was the main thing. A tactical switch was needed and Christian Pavon came on for Chris Brunt as we pushed for more players forward and it very nearly worked as some good play in the middle uh, from Jonathan Hogg, a fan Steve Mounier who laid it off for Chris Christian Pavon, but he decided to take his time and had his shot blocked. And then Christian Pavon got injured. Brilliant. Jonathan Hogg was then sent off in injury time and we lost the game 2 1. I might as well start preparing for the championship now. Although the chances of me keeping my job in the championship are very slim already. And after that Southampton game, Christian Pavon has also torn his calf muscle and he is now out for the season. £12 million well spent. Well done, Proudy. You're an absolute moron. And Burnley won 3-1 away at West Ham, which means that we are now bottom of the league. Superb. Chris Brunt has also got his national C license, which is great news because he might have to become a coach when he uh, inevitably retires at the end of the season. Christian Pavon has also completed his language course, which means he can speak English to a reasonable standard, although he could probably take over as commentator because he can speak English at a better standard than I can. And also, it's not like he has anything else to do because he's injured now. And finally, we move into the Burnley game and it's been dubbed as El Sakiko, which is now the 20th time I've seen that this season. But anyway, into our second game with Burnley away, and this is a must-win game now. If I don't win this game then we might as well just be relegated now. Radjkovic starts off in goal once again. I, I've just not had the balls to drop him. The back four pretty much stays the same as last game, and uh, Jorgensen still isn't fit enough to start, so, well, we're not starting him. But we have gone with three across the middle in this game, and Danny Williams comes into the centre midfield to replace Chris Brunt, and Philip Billing and Aaron Moy keep their places in the side. Alexander Sinchenko then moves on to the left wing with Elias Kachunga playing on the right wing, and Steve Munio once again leading the line for us. He's our top goal scorer this year. I need him to score, like, a lot of goals today. It's quite ironic that I'm taking on Burnley in a game which could get me relegated in a series called Attempting Not to Get Sacked, when they were the first team I ever managed in a series of the same name. Although if we do beat them and then beat City in the next game, then I think we'll survive. Yeah, I don't I don't think we're going to beat City anyway, so... But miracles do happen, and that miracle could be saving and reloading, which I don't do on this series, by the way, because why would I lose 5-1 to Brian if I was saving and reloading? The first chance of the game fell to us after five minutes, and Danny Williams played in Steve Mounier, who unfortunately was offside, even though he fired the ball into the back of the net. I mean, nearly a perfect start for us. Nearly. Elias Kachunga then got the ball and crossed the ball into the box of Steve Mounier, who put a weak head at Tom Heaton, Apparently, that was a highlight, so I've had to leave that in the video. I mean, they all sort of count. And talking about highlights, which shouldn't really have made the video, uh, Gunmundsen had a shot blocked by Chris Lerva. I mean, surprisingly, the ball hasn't flown into the back of the net like it did last game. Gunmundsen also had a free kick on the stroke of half time, which just went wide of the post. And then at the other end, Aaron Moy had a free kick, which was saved on the line by Tom Heaton. And uh, that was it at half time. We were drawing 0 0. I really had to win this game. I don't know why we're pissing about trying to draw 0 0 away at Burnley. But when you're under 
under pressure, you need the big boys to stand up and take the game by the scruff of the neck. And that is what Steve Mounier did as he headed us into the lead after a great cross by Elias Kachunga. And this was the goal we needed. This was the lead we needed. And all we had to do was hold out. The one thing we've struggled with this season is holding leads because we end up doing something stupid. But I made sure the team were meticulously planned to not do anything stupid. So it really did help us when Chris Lerva pushed Matej Vidra down in the box and gave Burnley a penalty. I mean, first of all, he deflects a shot that was going wide into the back of our net against Southampton and then gives away a penalty against Burnley. I mean, is he playing for the opposition or is he playing for me? And of course... Vidra went and put it in the back of the net. I mean, no surprise there. It was only until the 80th minute where I realised that I'd forgotten to send opposition instructions again. So, probably technically my fault as well. And it was desperation time as Peter Crouch came off the bench. And I was hoping that this would be the moment that he would score. Or assist. Just do anything. Please, Peter. I spent 12 bloody grand on you. But deep, deep, deep into injury time, Peter Crouch got the ball on the wing. Put the ball in the box. And Steve Mounier headed it wise. We drew 1-1. We're going down.